Hope you're well. My name is Andres Pimentel, and I make documentaries, video essays, uh, lifestyle content, and I like to interview people. I'd like to use this platform to share the artists in my life. So today I have the first in a mini-series on authors. Today I'm interviewing Gabriela Lavero. Is has her book published, Of Liars and Thieves, book one in the Ramayana Chronicles. I hope that's how you say it. Sorry if you're watching this. I have a conversation with Gabriela about her book and some tips, creativity, and I think just hearing her story and how it's been fun and difficult is inspiring. The story is set in a fantastical world called Raymara, and the realm has been in a state of lawful peace for a thousand years since a huge war took over most of the realm. So there's a peace law mandated by the goddesses who created the realm. Not seen any violence for 1,000 years until one night, five beasts that have been extinct since the war suddenly appear and kind of just spread across the realm and no one knows what's going on. So five companions are brought together and they are sent on a quest to recover the beasts and save the world before anything bad happens. But little do they know, they are part of a big prophecy, sends everyone into a bit of, of a tizzy. So <laughs> yeah. That's a good word. <laughs> Thank you. Um. What would you say to people with stories who are just kind of stuck in this, oh, that would be cool, uh, and then to get it kind of over the hump to, wow, it's going to be in Barnes & Noble and independent bookstores? My biggest advice would be to just keep going. I know it's scary, and I know that there's that voice inside of your head that says, this is stupid, no one's going to want to read this, I'm not a good writer. What's the point? I might not even make any money from this if that's like your goal is to like spread it to a lot of people. But that's just a voice in your head. It's not the truth. And you won't know unless you try. So yeah, my biggest advice is just keep going. Believe in your story, believe in your characters, believe in what you've created. Even though the world was not designed for artists, you can show the world that artists do belong. And the hardest thing is getting over that hump, but having friends who are also writers or also readers who you can have an open dialogue with, I think is really, really important too, finding a support system. But yeah, there's no easy fix. It's just kind of having to, like if you're passionate about it, just keep doing it every day, even if it's 10 minutes a day, you just have to keep going. I was curious about uh, what inspired the setting, because uh, there's a lot of really diverse ecosystems. I really liked, obviously one of my favorite stories of all time is Lord of the Rings. So I always really loved like Fangorn forests, the huge trees and like the old moss and all of that stuff. So I really liked like huge forested uh, settings, but I also really liked like sprawling mountains and growing up in a place where there was a lot of diverse landscapes, I guess you'd say from a desert to like pretty wet, like green climate. I just really liked the idea of a realm having like all of those things in one, but having like very clear borders between them. So it was just kind of a mixture of like all of my favorite books, uh, Lord of the Rings, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, and then my own home that, yeah, that, that gave me the idea. I started the idea when I was 16. It was in November, there's a organization called NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month. I hadn't come up with an idea of what I was gonna write until the day before the challenge started. And it really started just with one scene between two of my main characters. When I came up with that idea, I began writing November 1st of 2017, and I've been working on it ever since. And now it's September, 2021, so yeah, about how long is that? <laughs> a long time, <laughs> a few years. But yeah, I just kind of all, always had the idea that it was going to at least be two books from the get-go. What was the most fun to write? Because I know you don't necessarily like writing all parts of it equally. I really liked the ending 
the sec what is it the third or the second to last chapter climax of the story of this book was my favorite because I don't know all writers have a thing where we enjoy torturing our characters it's just like the name of the game in my my mind it's kind of the catalyst for the rest of the story because a lot of things happen that kind of change the everything so that was a lot of fun to write and then i also just liked the build up and writing the dynamics of the love stories as well so yeah i would say like the last chunk of the book which as you said also is your favorite part of the book so maybe that shows <laughs> I like the action scenes when when things are going poorly and they have to figure out how to get out of these situations. I just like writing the high stress action situations because it's harder for me to go through the slower parts. It's just more fun to write faster paced or descriptions are also really fun for me to write. Uh, well, the hardest part of writing the book was definitely the beginning of figuring out how I was going to get these five random characters who have nothing to do with each other into the same place at the same time. And I guess that also shows the beginning was definitely the trickiest part, but it's always the trickiest part for any book that I've ever written. And the process as a whole, honestly, just figuring out how to do everything myself because I am self-publishing. So you have to do everything by yourself. And so learning about marketing and just making the book an actual book and editors and all of that just the organizational part was was definitely really hard <laughs> next book will be coming next year that's the that's the plan thank you for having me this is really cool i'm getting used to being interviewed i this is my second interview for this book and so it's just really cool to have this opportunity to talk about it and it just kind of feels like a like the real deal so yeah thank you for reading it also oh yeah of course i wish i had a copy to hold do you have one handy i have one right here it's right here hey okay there it is you're the first i have three authors i'm going to interview so thank you for being the first of course and, uh, yeah good luck with writing and you've definitely inspired me to finish something um, please do i'm uh, excited to read it <laughs> gonna be happy to see everyone else read it and thank you for choosing me to read it sooner it was a lot of fun thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed you can buy the book linked below and uh, check out her youtube channel and instagram if you enjoyed this conversation on art you might enjoy this other video other videos on uh being an artist don't forget to like comment subscribe i've noticed like half the people who watch this aren't subscribed and it'd mean a lot if you did i have another video coming up so i'll see you soon Bye bye <laughs>